We are all insects, groping towards something terrible or divine. This quote is from the writer Philip K. Dick's novel, The Man in the High Castle. Four, three, two, one. Take it away, Paul Garrison. My ears are ringing with bad news. This means we are in dire streets. Let's go live to our Man in the Street segment. Hello there, Man in the Street. Are you there? Paul, the word on the street is that Big Rock Bank is going to fail by the end of the week. And thou new stock price is about to crash. Our stock price is plummeting. Our viewership is in the pit. Our profits are near zero. Our future is at stake here. Every one of your jobs are at risk. Fauti, are you hearing me? We have to go back to our roots. We need to be more bombastic. Lustry blathering rents must once again be the key to our news network's success. Am I getting through to y'all? This means war. We need headlines that will grab the average zombie out there in La La Land and wake them up. We don't need anything to do with the truth. The truth is our enemy. Plus, the truth is boring. We need to fabricate a new reality lace with negativity, rumors, and lies. Lies. The bigger they are, the better. The truth be damned. Our people out there love a well-crafted conspiracy theory, or two, or even three. We need to stir up a dish of hate, along with a bowl of anger. Come on, Team Foul. It's time to fire some real bullets, whatever it takes. Our power of persuasion is crafted towards the lowest common denominator. Remember, no one can go lower than us. No so-called woke individuals need apply. Replacement theory. Let's harp on that one. It feeds all of the hungry animals and gets them going. It's the kind of thing they understand. Push it to the extremes. Even if we have to rewrite the Constitution, we will. We need to restore our power. We are number one. I need y'all to put on your power suits, your power ties. Dig up stories of your power UFO. We are the power that drives our planet. And my foul team, don't you forget it. Well, man, I didn't lose my job that infamous day of crisis for foul news. That was the day my circuit breaker blew and I went into overload mode. But I started to reflect more deeply on my life and what is important and what is not. In the beginning, into a broken world we are thrown, and here is how the new math of modernity works. You work eight long hours for two ten-minute breaks in a dust-filled plastic kitchen surrounded by snack food dispensers. You work eight hours to sleep eight hours. You work eight hours and trade for four in front of a flat screen TV with glazed over eyes watching the latest dumbed up reality show. You work six days to exhaustion only to be a couch potato in front of your flat screen TV on day seven. You work all year just to take a week or two off and you are so exhausted that you take a staycation only to play video games and tweet on Twitter about your meaningless life. You think it might be time to give yourself a break? 
And furthermore, you have to dig down deep and ask yourself the question, to have or to be, you have become deaf and dumb to your own human crying. Congratulations, you have been an active participant in killing yourself. You were too lazy to defy everything that you knew was wrong. You work all your adult life. Give your youth away and the productive portion of your precious life only to retire to live in an old age, gracing your village. Does this add up to a life? In our so-called infinite wisdom, do we call this living? And all that lifetime of work at your retirement party only adds up from that despairing point onward that for the remainder of your life you will only contemplate your last dying breath amongst other silverheads who are in the same dreadful condition as you. Is that all that you were owed in trade for your entire lifetime of work? Are these your real golden years? We have become so accustomed to material and social slavery that we no longer see the invisible chains around our necks and ankles. What a drag. Eventually, you realize that life is nothing but a parody of yourself, practicing your own fade out into oblivion. But that full realization arrived too late. Life is a short journey. Therefore, be authentic. Don't you hear your own human cry to live a meaningful life? Recently, I have asked all of these questions of myself, and I have found that it's never too late. Everything is going to be all right, Mrs. Murphy. Your surgery was successful. Last week, I quit for news. And instead of planning my life out until I could live in a retirement community, I now work as an assisted living aide in that same retirement community. This is infinitely better for me and the world around me. It's okay, I'm still young enough to help others. And there's more, Mrs. Murphy. I'm studying to be a hospice worker. This will take some time. I am more patient now. Oh, Paul, you are too kind to me. Thank you ever so much. You're the best. Life is never made unbearable by circumstances, but only by lack of meaning and purpose. Between stimulus and response there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. This quote is from Viktor Frankl. <laughs> 